thank you. Um, I, first, I'd like to, to thank the the uh, Taiwan Digital Publishing Forum for for the the invite and and thank all of you for for coming out and, and on this warm warm morning. Um, strangely, um, I've done the last 30 years in in the industry. I've done a lot of travel in the Far East, but this was my first trip to Taiwan, and um, I took advantage yesterday of touring the city somewhat and from from the uh, Chiang Kai-shek Memorial to Longshan Temple to Taipei 101 you have a you have a beautiful interesting city so I've really I've really enjoyed it um, and one important thing I'm sure that New York City could learn from Taipei is it's very good to air-conditioned subway stations <laughs> Better than New York City. <laughs> So for um, the more uh, IDPF and EPUB related portion, um, I'd like to do a little bit of introduction of the, the IDPF and the, and the origin uh, of EPUB, but more importantly look at what has, has happened both technically and organizationally over the last year, and then look forward the next year what we're going to be doing uh, with the standard and with the organization. And then, uh, being I haven't given these slides before, whether we get to the end will be, uh, will be somewhat, okay, I now know what time it is. So, um, we'll, we'll see if we get to discussions of presentational fidelity you can get with EPUB, and um, if there's, there's time, and maybe during the um, uh, discussion period we could look at, look at some demos. The IDPF um, was originally started as the, um, uh, OEBF, the Open eBook Forum, in late uh, 90, in '99. In it is a trade and standards organization. I think it is probably most well known for the development of the EPUB standard and the standards that preceded that. Um, but it also the organization has uh, publisher members, technology uh, producers, libraries, acad academians academicians, um, and it, it's, it has membership now um, well over 150 from, from 25 countries, so the, the I uh, for international in IDPF is, is starting to mean something now, which I'm, which I'm very pleased with. Um, and we transitioned to become the IDPF in 2001. Our first um, standard which you may be familiar with is o OEBPS, the Open eBook Publication Structure. The first version of that was completed really largely by the, the three technical initial members, um, Software Press, Nouveau Media, and Microsoft, and that s sort of pushed the, the, we pushed those into the organization and started accumulating more members and more um, uh, technical contributions. The first significant update and, and the version that was to some extent implemented, um, well, widely claimed to be implemented, not implemented too consistently, uh, was the 1-2 version of the specification in 2002. And then by 2005, the IDPF was, was aware of, of problems in the industry, uh, largely due to how spotty the implementation of the 1.2 version of the standard was. There was a number, there were a number of vendors who claimed to implement it. Uh, some were close, some were very far away. And so you had um, a publisher to bring a ebook onto the market had to generate .lit format for Microsoft and PDB format for Peanut Press or what became e-reader and um, uh, IMP for Gemstar and PDF for Adobe. And so it was still very expensive for publishers to bring their content to the market. And so the IDPF realized that, that the, probably the easiest thing to solve there was to drive toward a single standard that the publishers and conversion houses could do one conversion and put the content out to the distribution and sales channels. And we started that with the EPUB container effort in 2006, and then in 2007 we completed the update to the markup, markup and packaging specification to really develop what we have as, as EPUB today. And just recently, which we'll talk a little more about, we've completed the two, 201 um, version of the spec. And I, I think we've seen a great deal of success, starting with the 
Hachette Book Group in late 2008. They made a decision. They were only going to do EPUB. That was what was going to flow out. All the reading systems had to deal with it. And that many of, many of the major US and foreign publishers have done the same thing since then. And so the standard really does have significant momentum at the moment. And I promise I won't talk this long on each of the subsequent slides. Um, the takeaway from, from EPUB, at the very highest level, it is a packaging format to put a standard collection of markup in and be able to move that around from the publisher to the distribution channel to um, the, the reading system and uh, provides a, a reflowable standard content format. The .epub is the extension um, and that's that single reflowable digital book. The uh, components of EPUB, there are three of them. The container itself is the open container format, um, that OCF. The markup and packaging, excuse me, the packaging format is OPF, the open packaging format, in, and in OPF you describe the reading order, the, con the contents of the publication, and provide navigation information. And the markup of the content is the open publication structure, which is OPS. And uh, that, at the current version of the standard, is, is generally implemented as, as XHTML markup, though DT book is also allowed. And so, simply, EPUB is an, an OPS, OPF publication packaged in an OCF container. And generally, as we did the development of these standards, we, tr we strive very hard not to um, not to invent anything we didn't have to invent. The container is basically zip with some additional rules. The markup is, base, is, is XHTML with some e-publishing uh, e extensions. And the OPF, the packaging format, is new and I think a significant portion of our work in that it has been adopted by other standards as well, um, uh, DAISY amongst them. Um, I won't really belabor this slide, but I think the concept of an EPUB reading system is important. It's, it's a very broad definition, and the, which is significant in that you, it is not required, though it's nice, that you take an EPUB file all the way out to, say, a, a, you know, an, a, a consumer device that someone might hold in their hand. But it is also feasible to take EPUB at the very other end of a publishing system, which is what, for instance, Amazon does. Amazon takes in EPUB from the publishers and they script it to something that's not very EPUB-like and they deliver that to the reading systems. And so technically, you would say that Amazon is an EPUB reading system because at the very far end, they accept it on the inbound side. Something like Apple, they, they ingest EPUB, and they deliver EPUB all the way to the iPad through iBooks for Reading. So there's a great variance on, on what constitutes an EPUB reading system. So I'll, I'll just, I, I felt required to do a few, a few vaguely technical slides on, on, the, uh, on the, the three letter acronyms. So just at the, at the very highest level, um, uh, OCF is the, is the packaging format, it's the single container, that in which you put all the pieces, the, the, uh, the, manif the package file itself, the um, markup files, the images and so forth. And the, the, you, know, you can take an, uh, an EPUB and you know, xyz.epub and you can change that .epub suffix to .zip and you can explode the thing and all the component parts will be there. The only real sort of new rule in OCF is there must be a meta inf directory and inside that there must be a container.xml and from there you can find the root of the publication. Other than that it's really just a zip archive. So the idea with this common container was to move away from a separate format for Microsoft and Mobi and Sony and eReader and ETI and so forth. So the idea is it is, it is a, a format that can leave publishers, leave the conversion houses into the distribution channel and as long as your ebooks are unencrypted, it is perfectly reasonable to move them from, reading syst from EPUB reading system to EPUB reading system. Um, so it, sh it is a, a transport format, at least for unencrypted files. 
The other two three-letter acronyms, OPS, OPF, the packaging format and the market format, as I mentioned, these were the where we are in EPUB, they were fairly constrained enhancements to the previous version of the specification. We focused with EPUB 2.0 on enhanced presentational fidelity, and I'll have some demonstrations of that subsequently. Enhanced navigation uh, with the advent of the NCX requirement, and uh, NIMAS compliance, which is probably only relevant in the states, but it is um, for an accessibility, it, it is such that um, to, to foster accessibility, particularly in the higher education space, um, the, the content must be available for text-to-speech and so forth, and so EPUB is, is compliant in, in that arena. It right now has wide industry adoption, um, definitely in the States, and in Europe, um, I certainly realize there is work to be done to make it um, uh, completely viable in, uh, in, in the, particularly the Far East, in Israel, where we have different script, script directions, and I'll be talking some, uh, in some detail about that. Um, the idea is, as I said, to enhance re cross-reading system content flow, and um, I'll talk a little bit about validation and conformance checking. The IDPF website, I think it's the first time it's been on the slide, that, the, the standards are there, uh, that's, that's where to go to, to look at this. So now, with that, with that introduction, I'll talk a bit about where, what, we've, uh, what we've done in the last year. Now, this project, uh, EPUB check, is not technically an IDPF project. It is a, an open source Google code project, but many, many to maybe all of the contributors to EPUB check are uh, active developers of the EPUB standard. It is, it is a tool to validate publications and make sure they conform to the specification. It checks the container structure, it checks the markup, checks the, uh, the packaging file. It, it can be run as a command line tool or, or on the web. Um, and, and much to my surprise, we just spun the, the 105 version of, the, of, of EPUB check at uh, the end of March this year. And just looking a couple of days ago, there's been 7,000 downloads. I mean, this isn't a tool that, that you know, a consumer downloads for fun. I mean, this, is, it, this, I think, is an indication of the number of people who are giving serious thought to trying to create good EPUBs. And this is a step toward uh, having that cross-reading system compatibility. You can look at an EPUB and determine whether it is at least correct and that, uh, that the reading system should be able to deal with it. That's the, uh, that's the URL for the most recent uh, release at the bottom of the screen there. Um, and, and it's a... You know, it's a very simple little animal. The, the first line, it's a, written in Java. The first line there, I'm checking, I'll talk a little bit more about the conformance tests in a moment, but I'm checking one of the conformance tests there. And it comes back and it says, it's unhappy about the use of the with attribute. And then uh, tested another one down there. The, the, second, the second line is the answer you should get. So it's very easy to use command line anywhere there's Java. And you can also install it on the web to upload files. So it's a, I think it's a, a very good tool. And there'll be more work done on this in the future. I'm not going to go into any substantive detail about what happened in, e in the newest version of EPUB check. I did bold a couple of these that I thought might be somewhat interesting. Uh, there was, you know, we had problems with people producing EPUBs that were referencing, say, CSS style sheets that were not actually included in the EPUB. The EPUB check now catches that. Um, better validation of the, of the MIME type signature. And, and probably technically most significantly, uh, validation, actual validation of the structured ve vector graphics that is included in uh, EPUB markup. Um, now going from a little bit of a technical thing to a little bit of a marketing thing, um, we, the IDPF, uh, before our conference in March, I believe, um, we kicked off a logo competition for, for EPUB, and we had, much to my surprise, over 200 submissions from, from uh, 19 countries, and um, there's some of them there. The problem with showing this slide is everybody looks at it and, wants to have one logo, but it, no one wants the same one. And so the one we chose, I'll quickly move to the one we chose. This is in the process of, of getting trademarked and that will be, IDPF will be using this to promulgate adoption of the standard and, and awareness of the standard going forward. 
The other significant thing that happened in the last year was the uh, EPUB 201 standard. Um, that was produced by the EPUB Maintenance Working Group. Um, it was released in, in May of, of 2010. Um, it was not a significant technical change to the specification, but the idea was to correct errors in the specification and, and, um, and, and address inconsistencies. And so uh, what it, it also unified the three, public, the three previous more standalone standards into, in, under the EPUB moniker. Um, and the, so it brought oh, the, the container format forward to, mi to mix in with the, the, the OPS OPF. And I think I will talk a little bit about font mangling in a moment, but it, it uh, regularized and, um, how, we, how one can include fonts in an EPUB and still adhere to the embedded font licensing restrictions that, that to such that you can legally dis um, uh, distribute the document. And again, I'm not going to go into any great detail of the, of the changes, but these, these standards are public now. Um, a lot of, of amplifications and clarifications in navigation. Uh, we introduced MIME types for embedded fonts. Um, the, we ch uh, defined how CSS and NCX should be encoded before it would be included in, in the e uh, in, uh, EPUB. Um, did a fair amount of clarification to uh, handling of, of the more advanced uh, CSS uh, selectors, the pseudo elements. They are indeed required by conformant reading systems to support them. And another, you know, really sort of hole we had in the standard is we never bothered to say it's required that anything that is referenced in the manifest must to actually be in the EPUB. So that's now in the standard and also checked by EPUB check. And these are the current versions of the standards. This is what um, everybody should be, you know, coding their publications to for, for EPUB 201 specifications. Those are the, the three standards at the top and the informational document on, on font mangling at the bottom. Um, the next thing that was, that just, really just happened is we kicked off the development of the next version of the standard. Um, I call it through this presentation uh, EPUB 2.1. It could well be 3.0, 3 but it's definitely going to not have a zero as its second digit. Um, and with the goal to be developing the next version of the standard, the, this charter for this de development work was, was approved in May by the board. Um, Thankfully, I am not chairing this group. Uh, Marcus Gilling from the DAISY Consortium is. Um, myself and, and Brady are vice chair, and Bill McCoy, um, ex of Adobe fame, is, is secretary. And there's very broad involvement. I mean, you know, whether that's a, it, it's a good thing. But from a, from a technical working group, having 140 participants is a lot of people to be working together on, on, a, on, a, on a technical venture. Um, it's going well so far. Um, the, from the 2-1 from the, um, charter, I'm going to just hit on a few of the, the top level things that, um, that are, being, are being worked on in, the ver in this version of the specification. Support for rich media and interactivity is at the top of the list. So. Uh, audio, video, probably HTML, 5e, JavaScript interactivity, figuring, because right now these are not core media types in EPUB, and so there are certain, there are reading systems that can do some of this, but if you start putting this in your, in your EPUB, then you start coding to the particular capabilities of individual reading systems, and that gets back to creating lots of somewhat different EPUBs or putting you know, a switch statement or whatever in your EPUB, and we want to, you know, with, the, with this effort, we want to try to have these advanced features, ag again, get to cross-reading system support. Um, one that I suspect is, is signif of significant interest here is enhanced global language support uh, with particular emphasis and particular high level of participation um, on um, uh, top to bot bottom, left to right um, um, writing order. Um, and there, it, you know, Japanese, Chinese, but also Hebrew and Arabic. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this. There's the, I'm just really pleased at the level of involvement from the Far East, lots of involvement from Taiwan, 
and, and Japan and Korea and, and we're certainly reaching out for others in this effort. Um, there's a, a lot of interest in using EPUB for beyond standard, you know, more beyond trade books, getting into the into magazine and newspaper support. The format works actually quite well there today, um, certainly in the newspaper space, but um, augmenting it with more article level uh, metadata is something that it will likely be in this next version. Enhanced, uh, enhanced metadata as well. Um, figuring out how to incorporate things like Onyx feeds, um, navigation enhancements, um, likely support of mathematics, particularly interested in, in interesting in the uh, textbook space, uh, figuring out, you know, th this is all very well and good to put something like MathML on a slide like this, but you ha we have to be cognizant of it's hard to do MathML. And so you don't want to, how do you not burden the low end reading systems? And so that's, that's some of the, the things that we're struggling with. Um, enhanced annotation support, how you move in a standard way annotations from one reading system to another. It's also an area that we're looking at. Um, page level layouts. Um, one of the beauties of EPUB is it's a, a reflowable format. You take it from a big reading device, it has fewer pages, probably, if you're paginating, than a smaller reading device. But if you use the really advanced layout features of EPUB, you can make an EPUB that only looks good on an iPad because you've placed everything exactly by knowing how big an iPad screen is. And you take that to an Android phone, it's not going to be very pretty. And so we're looking at ways that you could potentially have a reflowable version of EPUB and then maybe multiple pre-paginated versions or at least pagination hints um, also encoded in an EPUB and there's various approaches for that. Um, and improve alignment with web standards. The, the, and we have some challenges there. HTML5 is not done. CSS3 is not done. But we certainly don't want to be in a position of dreaming up new uh, markup, new technologies when, when there is good technology to borrow from and how we balance referencing things that aren't complete yet is one of the one of the challenges as we go, go through this effort. Okay, that's the past year. Now moving forward, um, you know, from, a, from an IDPF organizational standpoint, the idea is to, is to do better from an outreach standpoint, uh, focus on outreach, adoption of the standards, and marketing of the standards. Uh, the EPUB logo will play a, a, a role in that. And if you've looked at the IDPF website, it does look like it was designed 10 years ago, probably because it was designed 10 years ago and we expect to move that forward. There will be a new version of EPUB check. This I can't say as a fact, being it is a volunteer effort, but um, there is work going on there. The, ne the next significant piece of work that, that, I, that hopefully will, will get done is CSS validation. Um, additional conforming performance checking and bug fixes. So that's just an ongoing effort. Now, I think most interestingly to this group is what, what, where we are with the, the EPUB 2.1 effort. We had our, our first face-to-face -face in New York, uh, fa the large face-to-face -face meeting in New York a couple of um, months ago. And at that meeting, you had you know, the, the players that were involved in you know, publishers and technology uh, producers and, and others that were involved in the development of the previous standard, but we also welcomed to that meeting uh, representation from both Google and Apple to um, high profile recent adopters of the EPUB standard, so it's, we're having uh, broader participation, which is very, very pleasant. Um, we did in New York divide the effort into uh, into various subgroups working in parallel. That, that list of everything we're trying to do in EPUB 2.1 is, is more than we could possibly do if we were all working as a large group. So um, I'm going to skip the, the second to the top one there for a moment. But annotations, um, as I mentioned before, layout and styling, um, how to increase um, sort of print-like fidelity. Um, and, and increase the styling capability of EPUB. Obviously, rich content interactivity and advertising is an area that's being focused on. The text content, what the markup is actually going to be in EPUB 2.1, it looks to be heading toward um, keeping with the XML um, serialization of HTML while bringing in um, um, HTML5, uh, some HTML5 elements, especially for rich media. 
Um, it looks like DT book may be deprecated in the standard um, with moving into the HTML, HTML vocabulary the semantic markup that was previously gotten via DT book. Uh, working on enhanced navigation as a subgroup and working on metadata as a subgroup. Now back to the second to the top there. Internationalization and CJK support. That is one of the more active areas. There was just a meeting um, two weeks ago in, uh, in Sapporo um, and that had excellent participation. Quite a number of, of folks made the trip over from, from Taiwan. We had good uh, participation from uh, Japan, obviously, since it was a little more local there, um, and, and Korea, and we are working to bring in um, uh, ec experts that, are, that will allow us to cover uh, Hebrew and Arabic, Arabic layout as well. So it was, it was well attended. It's, high, it's highly interesting um, to, the, to the organization to address these challenges such that there is a standard way to do, um, you know, vertical right to left right-to-left layout in, uh, in uh, EPUB. Um, there's lots to do. Um, really aggressive schedules. The, the idea is to have the uh, first, probably not complete draft later this year with public drafts early in 2011 and uh, submitted for adoption by the middle of the year 2011. I mean, that seems like a long time, but there's, you know, with this number of people working and this, this amount of of technical areas being addressed. So I, I would encourage folks to, who are interested in making technical contributions um, anywhere in the specification, but particularly in the enhanced global language support area. Um, there is, it, it's not a closed club. We are, we are interested in, in more participation. So here's who to, who to talk to as far as joining the group. The um, other area I'll talk a little bit about is this just went up for review uh, in the maintenance group um, as I was sitting in the airport in LA looking to fly here I hit the send button on this message um, and this is the first cut at what hopefully or may become an EPUB conformance test suite and that is this is addressing the concerns largely raised by uh, publishers in the U.S., the, the um, American Association of Publishers, but just, you know, industry-wide, in that there are a whole number of EPUB reading systems out there today, and some of them do a better job of rendering EPUB, particularly complex EPUB, than others. And so the idea is to produce a test suite that we can run not we, reading system vendors can run themselves against their reading system and determine where they need to make improvements to bring their reading systems up to standards conformance. And we've, we've relied heavily on work done at the W3C, uh, but then also um, done additional tests. There's, I think, maybe 300-ish tests in there so far. And, you know, they're all very simple. You know, this, this test just tests that a PNG image works. And they're all like this, sort of very simple one or two or three page uh, uh, output and that describe what should be there. And then, you know, that's sort of the downside of this approach is a human actually has to look at it and see whether the output is there. It's very hard to do this mechanically, at least we haven't, you know, maybe, maybe some brilliant things will happen there. But this is a step in that direction and I, I hope to have, uh, that there'll be, be uh, significant participation in bringing this conformance testing um, forward this year. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, presentational fidelity of EPUB, just the things that you can do with a really conformant reading system. Obviously there's XHTML tables. Hopefully tables are used not for making things pretty on the page but for uh, presenting tabular data. Um, if you're looking to make things pretty on the page, that's what the CSS box model is for. You know, your margins and padding and displays and floats and all of that good stuff. Um, CSS visual model is there. CSS paged model is there. Widows, orphans, breaks, so forth. A lot of control of fonts, including embedded fonts, um, embedded objects, um, the core media types, PNG, JPEG, GIF, and Oh, SVG is there, it's on the bottom. Um, 
and the and you can use embedded objects to embed it more advanced media types that would be the right way to put in video with a fallback to an image if a reading system couldn't do the video I mentioned a little bit about embedded fonts that again that's the specification but it allows you to put fonts that you don't expect to be in a reading system um, in actually in the EPUB um, I have to confess I am not a Hebrew reader but I believe um, that is, that is roughly correct in the, that Hebrew in an otherwise left to right flow, the Hebrew itself is, is flowing right to left. Um, and so th that would be an, probably an embedded font, at least in, in this example. Um, and I think one other area is that, that just to, you know, EPUB, even the current version of the specification, you can do pretty things in. You can do rich content, co complex formatting and complex styling with the required media types and then as I mentioned the extensions with fallbacks for uh, you can have either have embedded objects or additional XML files um, and that's the way to put in video or audio or flash or HTML5 and so forth so the standards right now support a great deal of nice looking content um, but con you know how you how well you can lay out content is is certainly the most important piece so I'm going to just go quickly through some slides here. Obviously picture books like, like manga it, are very easy. It's the easiest EPUB in the world, a book full of JPEG pegs. But the, you know, the one little wrinkle there is you probably want to page a manga book from back to front rather than front to back and that would be a reading system extension of some sort. But the content itself is, is certainly perfectly viable. Um, this is, this is a very uninteresting looking cover, but this hopefully is really a, an SVG because there are curves there and lines and so forth and this is the type of image that it might really be good to be able to zoom and have it retain its crispness. So advanced graphics including SVG. Um, reflow of text, that's sort of the absolute most basic from a paginated reading system. This, this um, I think you'll note in, in this example that the margins on the right, I mean this is just CSS styling, the margins on the right got smaller as we increased the font size to such that keeping the sort of optimal amount of text on a line um, and then if that got sufficiently small or sufficiently large you would note different behavior of the drop cap but that's all just CSS styling and well there's no hyphenation there but that was just lucky because it's justified hyphenation you know certainly could be there there's some hyphenation so with the small the content on a smaller device it it went all the way to the end of edges of the device to try to get the maximum amount of text on the lines very simple table or or hopefully not actually a table but table of contents in in this perspective with with links a little bit more um, from um, from the uh, global language and text flow perspective in the um, one on the left there the that is obviously top to bottom uh, with right to left um, block progression now the thing that's sort of interesting about that that that's um, that's a project that we did with the uh, with NTT and Nikkei in Japan and it, you know we did implement that a piece of CSS3 to do that sort of layout but a piece of CSS3 that is subsequently changed to do that piece of, that piece of layout. Um, but the interesting thing there is if a reading system doesn't know how to do um, you know, writing mode and block progression, which would what, what you would need to encode that, the reading system should lay that out left to right, top to bottom. And a Japanese reader, or should, not, not picking on Japan, but the, this, this is the only piece of sample content I had in this area. Um, th but a Japanese reader should be okay with that. That is the, you know, the way they would expect to see the text on the web, perhaps not in print. So this would, you know, being able to have this sort of layout be a standard part of the next version of EPUB is, is certainly something I expect. And the one on the right is may, arguably a little bit simpler, but there, you note the interspersing of rep, left to right flow, albeit a very politically incorrect piece of Hebrew. Um, with the Hebrew flowing uh, right to left interspersed. You know, interesting layouts uh, that there's running headers and footers, uh, column, you know, number of columns changing as you, as you increase font size, that's sizing columns in M's rather than in, abs in absolute. And then, you know, this is, this is sort of, 
you know, either really interesting EPUB or really bad EPUB in that this was laid out to a particular device and a particular device side with all these boxes floated around and positioned. And it's great, you can, you can indeed do that in EPUB and it's kind of interesting, but then you get into having to have a lot of rather complex CSS such that this doesn't fall all over itself on a device that's not this size. That particular uh, image there in the, the, the top there is actually a, an embedded EPUB and has a slideshow embedded in it. This has some HTML5 embedded in it a little, uh, well, that's probably overstated, a little, little JavaScript application embedded in it uh, that, that actually plays a game. So these are things, that this, both of these would pass EPUB check. They, you know, you start using the more advanced features, you do things specifically for the reading system, which is what we want to move beyond in the 2.1 version of the specification. So I think that, I mean, basically the, the idea is to enhance our rich content support. There's a fair amount you can do today. Um, I think we will be adding, at the very least, HTML5 islands for interactivity, um, whether that's iframes or objects. Um, how we will do sort of in the wild scripting that might, uh, that might uh, alter the DOM is, is one of the active areas of discussion. And, but I think we as we move forward with, with more advanced content, we have to be very uh, careful of punishing less capable reading systems. We want to still make EPUB renderable on you know, low end, lower end reading systems without a great deal of power that you don't have to plug in. And I, I think we, we have to balance that going forward. So I think what being we're right on time now. So thank you. <laughs>